Okay, welcome back. We're now just going to continue on with the remainder of this lesson, which is touching on split horizon and route poisoning. We're just going to cover off on what they are and how they could be involved with loop prevention mechanisms. So this is covering off on the same thing as the previous lesson, that 1.3 under the layer 3 technologies from the ANASI examination blueprint. So if you haven't seen the filtering and tagging information video yet, then just check the description or the sidebar and it should show you the previous lesson that we went through. So split horizon, All right, what is it? Reading straight from what you see on front in front of you, distance vector routing protocols originally acted like hubs. So they advertised all their prefixes out all interfaces. As you can imagine, this could result in routing loops when certain interfaces or routes were lost uh, altogether. So instead of just trying to interpret that bunch of words in front of you, let's have a look at a bit of visualization here. So here we've got three routing devices, router 1 and then 2 and 3 on either side of it. So router 1 has its loopback interface of 1.1.1.1 that is advertising out all interfaces. It says, hey, come to me for this network. Now what used to happen in these earlier distance vector routing protocols is router two and three would go, oh yeah, cool, and advertise back out all interfaces, including the interface that they learned the network from or the prefix from. So router two and three advertise back to router one, hey, I've got a path to 1.1.1.1 slash 32 but they would advertise with one additional metric so router 1 in a let's say this is like RIP in a distance um, vector routing protocol it has a metric of 0 to 1.1.1.1 so when it receives these advertisements from router 2 and 3 they've got an additional metric on them they've got a metric of 1 so router 1 is never going to go to router 2 or 3 for that network because it has a better path or a better metric to it with the metric of zero locally. So that's not an immediate issue. The issue is when it's a slightly more complex situation. Let's imagine there's a router four hanging off of router two and then the link between router one and two goes down. Then you could run into a loop between router two and router four because they're advertising back and forth between each other before advertising that this connection went down and that's when these older protocols, this older configuration without split horizon uh, would cause routing loops and issues. So, yep, enter split horizon. Split horizon prevents the advertisement of reverse routes. So reverse routes is the name of those routes where you just advertise straight back in on the interface that you learn something on. That's a reverse route and split horizon just prevents those. So EIGRP and some of BGP use split horizon by default. So you don't actually have to really worry about this too much. You don't have to go in and configure split horizon. It is now the default setting when you're going into EIGRP and BGP as well. But you, there are going to be instances where you need to manually disable split horizon. So make sure you understand it right now. It's not going to be part of this lesson, but in later lessons, you will need to disable Split Horizon as part of troubleshooting, specifically with DMVPN, but we'll touch on that in a bit. So what about OSPF, I hear you potentially asking. Well, OSPF is actually a link state um, protocol, not distance vector, so it doesn't have to worry about this Split Horizon issue. So again, just a bit of a summary here. Uh, split Horizon, it's in EIGRP by default and in BGP by default as well in some situations. And then it's often deliberately disabled in DMVPN configurations on the hub. But that is something that you'll go into when you uh, go into the DMVPN troubleshooting later on in ANASI. But make sure that you understand what Split Horizon is right now so that it's not going to be difficult later on when you're troubleshooting DMVPN. So let's just have a look. What does it actually look like then if we're using Split Horizon? Well, just the same as that other image we saw where router two and three were advertising back to router one, they just don't do it anymore. 
We're Split Horizon enabled, let's say this is RIP or ERGRP. We're Split Horizon enabled by default. This, this no longer happens. Router 1 will advertise to Router 2 and 3, but they no longer advertise back on that same interface. That's it. Simple. Again, just be aware, you need to have this understanding of Split Horizon so that when we go into the troubleshooting of DMVPN later on, it'll all be a lot clearer and easier and you'll understand why we're doing things the way we're doing them. Alright, so moving on to route poisoning. Do not let the name fool you. Route poisoning is actually a good thing. Alright, so as it says on the screen, it's a name given to the action of saying something like, hey, this route I had in my table is unreachable now, so don't send me traffic destined to it anymore. I don't want to receive your traffic destined to this network that's no longer reachable. So that's all route poisoning is. Just a term used to indicate that it's now advertising a route is no good. A route is poisoned is basically what the use of this word is for route poisoning. So on the screen we've got an example of a distance vector advertisement. Uh, we're using RIP here. So router 2 is advertising its loopback of 2.2.2.2 to router 1 saying, hey mate, 2.2.2.2 slash 32 it's with me. And router 1 adds it to its routing table and then it advertised to router 3. Oi, I know where 2.2.2.2 slash 32 is come to me for that network and router 3 adds that to its routing table. All happy days. Pretty normal stuff. Now if that connection is dropped, that interface goes down to from router 1 to router 2, what happens is router 1 then tells router 3, hey 2.2.2.2 slash 32 has a metric of 16 now and that's how it advertises that that network is no longer available. This is the route poisoning saying it's got a metric of 16 because in RIP a metric of 16 is the maximum metric. So if you put in a metric of, metric of 16 for a route advertisement you're advertising that it's unreachable. So that is the point. So now router 3 will no longer send traffic to router 1 when it's trying to reach 2.2.2.2. So in EIGRP um, it'd be the same thing except the metric would be set to infinite because EIGRP can actually set an infinite metric as what that's what it uses to say that something is unreachable, unreachable uh, which is something that you will run into when we go into the route redistrib redistribution between EIGRP and OSPF. Now OSPF it sets the LSA age to 3600 seconds which is the maximum lifetime for an LSA so it's not exclusive to distance vector protocols when we're talking about route poisoning but just be aware that because OSPF is linked state what it would do is set the maximum age of 3600 seconds instead when it's advertising to say a route is no longer available and that's basically it that's all that you need to cover off on for the foundation of split horizon and route poisoning we will use this foundational knowledge in later lessons when configuring and troubleshooting certain technologies but having this foundational knowledge now will help a ton later on I would say that the split horizon is something you definitely have to pay closer attention to I don't think that route poisoning is something that I found too important when it came to my NRC exam but still it's part of the examination blueprint and the exam can change just like that so make sure you're aware of these topics and then the next topic in the examination blueprint will be troubleshooting redistribution of all routing protocols so watch out for that one Otherwise, I uh, thank you for watching. You can check the description for additional information and ways that you can support the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.